Welcome back. In last week's episode, we actually learned how we can build this recruitment tracker template. We started with building out the table and then basic inputs and calculating the number of applications and also the number of days to hire. In this week's episode, we'll be building an active pipeline chart that we will put here. Now let's get started. So in order to calculate the chart, the data will create that in a separate sheet. So I'm going to open a new worksheet and then I'm going to say help because this is going to be hidden. Once we build this whole template out, we don't need to keep this um, sheet visible so we can hide this sheet later. And what we're going to do is to first define the stages. So we already have defined the stages in these. So I'm going to just copy and come over here, paste as values. So if I'm building a template for somebody else to use, I will put formulas for these things to get everything from the input sheet, but I'm going to keep I'm keeping it simple for this video tutorials. I'm assuming you're build, you're building it for your own purpose. So in that case, we don't need to make it too complicated with too many formulas. We'll just build it what's necessary. So we copy the stages over. And now what we're going to do first is active count. So that means this is what we will be using to create our chart. So before we write the formula here, I think it'll be helpful if we can name the um, the table here, which we will be using now. I'm going to name that table by going to the table name here and then call it T underscore apps. And then come back here. And then now we're going to write a formula. We're going to use countifs function, countifs. The first is what range um, of our criteria. So the first thing we're going to do is to go here and say the status, comma, the criteria is that it should be empty, double quotes, double quote. So this means the applications that have not been closed yet, meaning the status is empty, which means the decision has not been taken. Because what we are trying to calculate is active application count it is important we exclude those that are closed and that's why we do the status should be empty and the stage for column comma i'm going to go back to the help sheet the stage column should be b4 so this means b4 so b4 is nothing but the stage name of the first stage close now it'll count one, one, four, one, one. So it says seven are active, right? Seven applications are active. If you come in here, we have totally six that are act, that are closed, totally 13. So the seven are still active, meaning the decision has not been taken yet. So our formula is working correctly and it's calculating the active count in each stage. Now it's time to convert this into a, a chart. So we'll do insert. We'll choose um, a 2D bar chart, a stacked bar chart. And now we will add labels to them, data labels. So add chart, data labels, center. And then what we're going to do now is since we need a stacked bar horizontally i'm going to just change select data i can just switch row to column hit okay and now we have the chart which takes up less space uh, in our dashboard so we'll, this is what i did in my template so you can obviously choose different types of charts but i'm just going to go with what we had in my original template which is to have a horizontal stacked bar. And what we are going to do now is remove the axis by hitting delete, select the axis, delete key, select the grid lines, delete key. So now we have you know done all the things. So now what we need to do is to, we should get right click format, so that this uh, menu appears. So now when you select something like this, um, click inside any of the bars, and then you can see the series options. 
Now, if you reduce the gap width, let's say I reduce it to 0%, that means it's gonna take up more of the space, and then I can make it shorter or less height. And then I will type in the name as active pipeline, because that's what we are building. And then what we need to do is to make these numbers a little bit larger. So click on any of these data labels and then go and maybe make this font size 20. So I'll do that for all the four stages. This is why, I mean, having actual data in the table uh, makes it easier because now when we work with the charts, the data is all present. So it makes the formatting and everything uh, a little bit easier. Okay, so now we have done this. So the last couple of pieces I want to do is to, you know, not have anything um, in the background. So the, I'll tell you the reason why. So if I cut, select the chart, the entire chart, press Control X for cut, and then go here to the first sheet because we are going to paste it here. And now it'll look a little bit um, out of place. Again, this is a formatting personal preference, but I would prefer to not have this white background. So I'm gonna select the chart and then you can actually change uh, the background by changing the shape fill to no fill. That means that white disappears and now our blue background will be used. And so um, now the title, we would want to change the font color to so that it's very visible. And then also the border. If you don't prefer the border, uh, I, um, you can also go back to the format and then change the outline to no outline. And now you have a nice active pipeline chart, which you can resize if you want to make it not take up too much space. There we go. So now we have an active pipeline. Um, oops, I forgot one thing. I didn't put a legend. So whenever we build these charts, we have to make sure that um, the what each color means is clear. So for, that's why we need a legend. So I'm going to click on the chart area again, go to design, add legend top, if you want to put it at the top. It is there, it's not visible because of the font color. So I'm gonna click on the legend and then change the font color. And now if you want to make this a little bit taller so that the bar is clearly visible, there we go. So now what this active pipeline chart means is that there is one application in the application stage that is not being decided yet, which is the application 13 because it's only been uh, step, only past the application stage. It, we have not done a phone screen or anything yet. We have also not closed that yet. If you decide based on the application that you do not want to go to the phone stage for this candidate, then you will close it. As soon as you close it, you will see that the application um, section of the bar becomes zero because there's no application which is yet undecided in the application stage, so that's why it happens. So if you still want to take the time to decide on this applicant, don't put closed and you'll instantly see the active pipeline change. This is the same way if you're making any decision on any application, once you close it, that will be removed from the active pipeline because the active pipeline, as the name indicates, is meant to capture all the applications that are still active for this job, meaning you have not made a decision yet and that is the purpose of this. It also shows how many are in each stage. You can see that there is one candidate in the offer stage, which means we have given an offer, one candidate still um, in the interview state, and um, which means the candidate has done the interview, but we have not given an offer or we have not closed it yet. So that was the active pipeline chart. Uh, in the next video, we will be building a recruitment funnel, and which we will be placing it here. We will also do a top decline reason table and that will complete the recruitment tracker Excel template. If you like the video, please share with your friends. If you have any comments or suggestions or feedback, please post them in the comments. I look forward to your feedback and I will see you all in the next week's episode and thank you very much for watching.